Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now what I've got in front of me here are a few bases of the Nam era local forces from Battlefront. And they've very kindly sent me a company of these guys to have a play with and to put together. They're a lot of fun. Um, I particularly enjoyed the fact that there's actually quite a bit of character in them. And there are a fair few poses so that all of your bases are going to look a little bit different to one another. Now this method definitely suits if you are going to be painting large mobs of these guys because individually, I think you'll see if you take a good close look, they aren't all that fantastically painted. But the end result and a, a unit of them is going to look much more interesting on the table. So all of the paints for this one will be listed in the description below and we're going to keep it nice and simple. Let's get started. Now, simply for the sake of painting him, I'm going to do one guy individually here, and I've stuck him to a frankly adorable little 15mm base for this. Now, you can also line these guys up on something like a popsicle stick or similar, just dab them down with a little bit of blue tack or PVA glue or what have you, and prime them all in one go, or you can even paint them on the bases, those four-man bases, and that's exactly what I did for the miniatures that you would have seen already. Uh, but in this case, one dude, that's going to look a little bit simpler. Now, whether you are painting them assembled on their bases or individually, first thing to do is to prime them. And for this fella, I've used Uniform Grey from the Army Painter. Now, any medium grey is going to work for what I've got in mind, so you could use uh, Mechanicus Standard Grey or something along those lines. Or you could even use something like Grey Seer or a very light grey. If you do go the light grey route, you can skip this next step. So over the grey primer, we're going to start by dry brushing him. Now ordinarily I am quite precious about which brush you might want to use, but in this case it seriously doesn't matter because we can be quite generous with this. I am using silver grey from Vallejo, but there isn't a right choice here. Just pick anything nice and light. You could even use white. Now what I am going to do is use this to basically emphasize the high points on the miniature and leave some of that grey in the recesses. Uh, this is going to be really useful for our next step, and it's also going to make it a little easier to paint some of the details like around his face, his hat, and what have you. So you can be nice and quick with this. Doesn't matter if it's a mess at all. Now if you're painting a few of these guys at a time, you're not going to have to worry about drying time too much. But make sure that that is allowed to set and dry properly before you do this next stage, otherwise you're just going to lift it off and it's going to turn into a disaster. What I have is Black Templar. This is from Citadel, it's one of the contrast range. And I tend to find Black Legion, which is the other one of the black paints in their range, covers like a really thick uh, traditional acrylic. Whereas Black Templar, you see, as I apply this over the quote unquote pajamas, that famed black, not quite uniform. Uh, there's a little bit of the, the dry brush showing through, which gives us very, very quickly our shaded and highlighted effect for the uniform. So nice and quick. When it comes to painting up on his body, uh, don't worry too much if you hit things like his equipment, his arms and what have you, but try and avoid them if you can. Now once that contrast settles and dries, you'll see that it leaves behind quite a bit of shading while giving us some of the highlights that we're going to need to make this fella look a little bit more interesting at table distance. Now it's worth pointing out that not all your local forces would necessarily be running around in the famed black pyjamas. Uh, pretty much any color would be suitable. There's uh, pale sort of linen colors, blues and yellows as well. Uh, but you can also put them in sort of off off-handed um, North Vietnamese army gear, in which case either tan yellow or green yellow will also work quite well for swapping in some trousers and tunics and what have you to make them look a little better supplied. But what we'll move on to now, this is orange brown, and I'm going to paint in the wood on the weapon here. Uh, now the weapons are pretty eclectic. There are some which are there's AK-47s, there's this one here, the SKS, and this is a fascinating bit of uh, Soviet-era technology. I really recommend looking it up because, man, the SKS... Uh, 
I wouldn't want to be carrying one. This little nobble here at the end is actually a folded back bayonet. And uh, you'll notice that the dude's hand sits awfully close to where that is. Anyhow, go look that up. It's quite interesting. But a couple of coats of orange brown here will do the job for the wood. Now at this scale, I tend to find it easiest to paint the wood on the gun before painting the arms and hands, because now I can paint over any of the bits that I might have blipped. And what I've got here, this is beige red. And uh, I like this one because it's not terribly red. Now a brief word from the unfortunately wise. When I painted the others on the bases that I did earlier, I made the mistake of painstakingly painting in the straps on the sandals that these guys are wearing. All I can say is don't bother. <laughs> when these are based, you've got a bit of sand around their feet, uh, some grass, you are never going to see those sandals again, so don't bother. Honestly, save yourself the effort. What I am going to do now is use Iraqi sand and paint in the webbing. Now, there's a few different colors that would work here. Um, I just think Iraqi sand looks the most effective. Uh, pastel green would also work. So would stone gray. And when you come to the little water bottle on his hip, just cover the whole thing in Iraqi sand for now. And uh, don't forget that they have got straps going over their shoulders, which is something I forgot the first couple I painted. I'm also going to use Iraqi sand to cover in his hat. And uh, I am going to do a little bit more with this later so it doesn't look just like his webbing. Now, once this webbing is finished, I've got a tiny dot of brown beige and I'm going to just paint in the water bottle, leaving the straps of the webbing around it, holding it in place. Now, this is the teeniest, tiniest detail. And honestly, if you are painting for the effect of a unit, it's probably not something you need to do. You could skip it. But it's also such a tiny bit of work, I think it's worth breaking up some of that color. Now, at the same time, if you do want to paint in his sandals, I would use this color as well, but I'm not going to. Now, some, but not all of these figures, are wearing a little scarf around their necks. Now, this would also, in reality, quite commonly have been a white scarf with like black check marks. Um, good luck to you painting that at this scale. I am not going to be that fussy. But red was also quite common. So I have here Vermilion from Vallejo, which is super bright. Uh, but once we shade it, that's going to tone down quite a bit. Now for the first time, I'm actually using a small layer brush here because, my goodness, this bit's diddly. Now the last color I'm going to apply as a base coat on this fella is called Iron Warriors, and it's from Citadel. It's a really dark gunmetal. Now in reality, the metalwork on these would have likely been much more flat, you know, like a, a true black. Uh, but looking at them as miniatures, it's going to look a little bit more interesting if we do cheat reality a wee bit and uh, add a bit of gunmetal to it. Now remember as well, if you've got any figures that are carrying RPGs, that they were RPG 2s at this stage, and not RPG 7s. So the warhead on these, or on those rather, would be the same gunmetal color as on the weapons here. Now I realize I've just told a tiny lie, and there is one more color I want to add. That is going to be a tiny stripe of German camo beige for the weapon straps. Now you could do this in Iraqi sand, same as earlier, uh, but I think a, a little bit of a canvas sort of color helps to break up some of the shape on the front of his body here. Now once you finish with this, you can go ahead and do any bits of tidy up, uh, particularly with the black, something like black gray from Vallejo will work quite well. Uh, don't worry too much if it's not perfect. You know, we are painting for the effect of a unit. Now at last, it is time to shade our miniatures, or miniature in this case. Now, the figures you saw at the start of the video were shaded using neat Agrax Earthshade, and I think in hindsight, it might have been a bit much. What I've got here instead, this is half and half Agrax Earthshade and Lamian Medium, which is going to give us a much smoother finish, I think. At any rate, it's going over everything. Just bucket it on there. And uh, when you get big clumps, like huge big dollops of it, on his hat, for example, just move it around. Take a second to make sure you work it into all of the cracks and crevices. 
And once it's been applied, we'll leave it for about half an hour or so to dry and see what we get. Now, once that's dried with the benefit of hindsight, yeah, I really do think thin that shade down. That's going to make a big difference. Whether you're using Agrax Earthshade, Strong Tone, Umber Wash, anything of the sort, thinning it out gives it just a little less intensity. And particularly on the skin, I think that's going to help quite a bit. Uh, all the same, what I've got next, we are going to highlight the skin. I have flat flesh. So let's just go ahead, add a little bit of this to the backs of his arms, his little fingies, and we're going to go for the classic. Let's see if I can actually get his whole face on camera here. Uh, a little L shape across his cheek and then down the side of his face. Just to highlight that, give it a bit of shape. Now what we'll do, spin them around, and if you want to, grab a little bit of fresh Iraqi sand, and you can go ahead and just brighten up some of his webbing with this. And this will dry quite similar to the color underneath, uh, but it does add just a little bit of volume to some of these areas. So again, not a lot of work to do it, but something you could quite happily leave off, uh, particularly on stands of infantry that are going to be at the back of your army. Now this bit is purely me being fussy for the sake of it, um, but maybe you really want to spend the time on your, on your teeny tiny infantry. I have Iron Hand Steel, and what I'm going to do is quickly just flash in the bayonet on the SKS, because it was a different silver to the rest of the metal. So a couple of seconds like that, just to emphasize it, up to you if you want to do it. I'd recommend against it for an army, but... Eh, it does look cool. Now the last thing that I am going to do is to very lightly dry brush a little bit of dark sand onto the hats here. Now, you can also apply this over the boonie hats too, um, pretty much any color that you would have painted them. Dark sand is going to work fine for a faded, sort of sun bleached finish. Uh, and then once you've done that, your infantry are pretty much finished. All you need to do then is to varnish them, and I know some folks don't really like varnishing the miniatures for some reason, but uh, 15 millimeter metal figures go on. Save your work, add a little bit of varnish to your, your working steps, and you won't regret it, I promise. Then go ahead and uh, stick them to a base, if you haven't already, with all of his mates. Base that up, and the recipe for that will be in the description too. So, what does a finished stand of infantry look like? With a bit of luck, they'll look something like this. Now I've popped them up on the spinny thing, but I haven't got it spinning because trying to keep them all in focus would be a real mission. Now these guys were finished with neat Agrax Earthshade, and I think you can see there is a much more pronounced recess on some of these details, which isn't too bad, but in hindsight I do wish I had thinned it out a little bit. I think the slightly softer shading does work a bit better, but that's for you to decide. It is an extra step, and it is an extra something to mix in, so... Whether or not you like the look is up to you. So thank you very much to Battlefront for letting me have a play with these, because I have been looking forward to doing some Vietnam-era gaming for a while, and these little fellas are brilliant. So go check them out. I'll make sure there's a link in the description where you can find out more. Any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comment box below. And as always, thank you very much to Exit23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of my wonderful patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue, including my gorgeous producers who are showing up on screen now. Thank you one and all. So that's me flipped my usual outro around. <laughs> you all enjoy the rest of your day.